Hi and welcome back to another podcast with your host Moom Khan here at Raise Your Vibes. This particular podcast is one of those that's going to touch a lot of people in many, many different ways, either to resolution, denial, acceptance, or plain old, nope, that ain't me and this is not happening to me, when in fact it is. And the topic we're discussing <coughs> is breadcrumbing. And this is happening to a lot of people, has been happening to a lot of people, has happened to me. I've been I've been myself in a situation where I've accepted this and, you know, sometimes we don't realise we're doing it, sometimes we think it's okay and we don't understand the background as to why we're doing it. So first, let's just get a couple of things straight. Let's just get some things clear about what breadcrumbing is in different scenarios, different relationships. So firstly, um, different people will have different explanations of what breadcrumbing is. But when you're in a relationship or friendship, this could be a scenario where the other individual is only briefly putting in effort into that scenario, into that situation. They could, um, you know, when you want to meet up, when you want to have some quality time together, they're like, oh, I'm always busy, sorry, no, uh, can't make it. Um, Can we schedule for another time? Can we postpone it? Sometimes they might just ignore you, they might ghost you, they might just totally ignore the messages when it's convenient, inverted commas, to that person, i.e. they're not reciprocating the same balance in that relationship, whatever status it is, they then come forward and are with you for whatever purpose that might be, you know, that suits their particular needs. But in, in a relationship status, because that's what we're talking about, not just friendship status, in a relationship status, sometimes what we do and we, what we don't realise is that certain people are not really invested in us as much as we think we are, you know. And we keep pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring our love, devotion, respect, time, admiration, <clears throat> almost like you're back in like high school and you're putting this p- person on a pedestal and clearly, very clearly, they're not interested in you and you're still accepting what we call breadcrumbs you're accepting the tiny little interaction that they're willing to give and then you're like heartbroken that they're not interacting with you on a scale that you are you know and you're under you're trying to understand why if you're involved with this person romantically it could be that this person goes away has interactions with other people and you don't necessarily know where you stand and then they come running back to you for that same reciprocation of love and admiration and you give and give and give and this person isn't returning it back and why why do we do that why do we end up in this loop why is it this person you know keeps doing that and what does it say about us it says a lot about us by the way it says a lot about that individual and sometimes that person not stranding rude doesn't want to wake up doesn't want to smell the coffee as the saying goes you know Clearly, very, very clearly, things have happened to us at different stages of our life. Things have happened to us where we've become accepting of these breadcrumbs and we don't realise our own worth. We don't. We can fool ourselves, we can pretend, but we really don't understand the value of our worth. So let me give you a couple of scenarios, a couple of things, a couple of, um, I guess, flags, red flags that people call it these days. You know, you might be interested in this person, okay? It could be a friend, it could be someone that you're hoping to have a a romantic relationship with. And clearly you're invested in them, okay? And when you're together, or whether that's physically, or whether that's through your phone or social media, you have some form of interaction with this individual. But you clearly are more interested in that interaction than they are, right? You might make plans with them, they potentially cancel, or things keep getting postponed, or simply they don't show up and they come up with some lame excuse that they're too busy or some family emergency has happened. Sometimes that person even goes missing for a long period of time, then shows back up again in your life, confusing you again. And again, this is breadcrumbs, you know, but we don't realise that this is not a real relationship. A relationship uh, requires balance between two people, an equal balance. Sometimes that's not always possible. Sometimes it can be 70-30, it can be 60-40, because people have different scenarios happening in their lives, you know? 
Sometimes we have uh, relationships in different countries. We have partners that are not able to travel because of restrictions and so on. So yeah, the percentages are going to differ. Okay. Other things you might not necessarily know is where you actually really do stand with this person. You know, sometimes these people that are laying these breadcrumbs towards us, they're sporadic <clears throat> with their emotions and their feelings. They're un inconsistent, they're unpredictable. One minute they're laying it on thick. Oh, I, I have a lot of love for you. I have a lot of care for you and I care about you, whether this is through text messages or in person. And then the actual, you know, hardcore evidence of them wanting to actually be with you doesn't match. It's just words and it's empty words that sadly we've become to accept as the norm. We sadly become to accept that we're worthy of this nothingness because it is nothingness. Hence the term breadcrumbs. Okay. The other thing they do, they are hot and cold towards us. Sometimes, you know, we're the center of attention. So that person who's got that very, very low self-esteem, low issues uh, of personality or self-worth or self-love or self-care will keep accepting this person turning hot and cold. Okay. And it's almost like a mixed tap where at times, you know, um, we're waiting for this long, beautiful message that we might have sent them. We might have sent this beautiful, you know, heartfelt message to them. And in return, we just get a small little brief interaction and it's not what we deserve. We deserve a hell of a lot more. Okay. But that individual seems to think that it's okay to keep giving us little accounts, little interactions. And when we receive them in that status as that individual, we seem to think, oh, it's acceptable. Oh my God, isn't this person amazing? Oh my God, look how much love and care they've given me. No, no. Because if they actually genuinely cared about you, unless they're somewhere doing this hardcore, you know, MR15, whatever, cyber, whatever uh, responsibility where they have to be secret, hardcore, you know, hidden from the truth. Sorry to sound so, you know, facetious, but there are individuals out there that have any accountability will pick up the damn phone, will text you, will call you, doesn't matter. You can make up excuses for them left, right, center. But when we're in that situation, we don't. We will make a gazillion excuses for them because we don't want to see the truth and we don't want to peel back the layers and we don't want to sit in a situation where we're trying to understand their you know, predicament, we're trying to understand their actions because that's another red flag, really. Okay, it is another red flag because we're left frustrated, we're left confused and we're left emotionally drained in regards to that okay and the people that are you know engaging in the breadcrumbing clearly their, their attention is not wholly there their self-esteem is damaged further you know and the breadcrumbers that are often doing these individual sort of type behavior you know you might see them on social media for example uh, replying to some messages to other individuals but not replying to you it might be that they're giving more effort to the other individual, not necessarily the same to you. And when are we going to see the light? When are we say we're going to see the light? Because these types of characteristics, they're borderline narcissism. You know, this person's on an ego trip. This person is trying to satisfy themselves by, by getting attention from others, manipulating, feeling, making you feel guilty, lowering your self-esteem. And it's not easy to get over. You clearly are in a rut, the person that's on the other end of the breadcrumbs situation. You're clearly in a rut. There are clearly things happening. I personally remember going through a scenario where I really thought that I was worth that type of love and care and affection. And, I, and that was in my early 20s when I hadn't really figured life out. And it was from a friend. It wasn't a relationship partner. It was from a friend. But I, I, I believe that the small amounts of little time that they gave me and, you know, the, even though it would come with abuse at times, this was my only close friend, by the way, at that time in that period in my life. So I had become used to that this is normal, right? That this type of behavior is normal because I'd come from a different family ethic 
and it was very similar, that type of relationship status. So I'd gone from one to another. So for me, normality was that, was getting breadcrumbs. And it took me years and years, and I mean years of hard work on myself, of understanding boundaries, understanding self-love, understanding self-worth, to realize that actually that isn't acceptable. Actually, I'm worthy of time and I'm worthy of a peace and I'm worthy of you responding to my text messages or phone call or actually seeing me in person. And that your excuses that you're giving me are actually pathetic because I don't fit into your circle right now because you don't need that particular requirement of my time. And you, you don't need my energy or whatever it was that, that individual needed from me at that time. And it's only when I worked on my self image and I don't mean putting laser makeup on, clothes on. No, I mean self-image within, self-love within, self-care within, putting boundaries in within myself. And like I told you, it took me years, and I mean years to master that, you know? And um, even later on in life, there'll be some people that'll come and trip you up and still try to do little breadcrumbs. And there are times when you just try to nip it in the bud. And there's times when you will say, I'm worthy of more, actually. I'm worthy of a lot, lot more, you know? And sometimes we don't realize that we are accepting breadcrumbs because we don't feel worthy of that love. We don't have it in ourselves. So when we don't have it in ourselves, our belief system and our thought system becomes, you know, very, very different. And we become mixed up in reality and what is actually happening in the social world because quite a lot of these interactions are through the social context, not face-to-face. -face. And sometimes with face-to-face -face ones, they're far worse because you, you feel awkward, you feel, you know, society sort of pressure that you're the one with the issues, you're the one that's doing this, you're the one that's, um, you know, got issues, when clearly you haven't. But you've got that societal pressure because that person ropes you into feeling guilt, you know? Initially, you've had some love bombing. Initially, you might have had some trauma dumping. You might have had ghosting happening with this individual. Many, many things. And the breadcrumbing is just like the top of it. You know, it can be very, very benevolent. It can be benevolent. It can be really crude and really rude. And it can also be painful, very painful. And coming out of it and going into it, we don't realize we've been manipulated. And we don't realize that what we're accepting is far less than what we are actually worth. And that's the bit that's concerning to me is that I'm seeing individuals that I know and that I love and cherish accepting breadcrumbs. And no matter how many times you will have a conversation with them and no matter how many times you counsel and offer friendly advice, they're doing the same scenario over and over again. And, you know, they're accepting the breadcrumbs, they're accepting um, that reinforcement of this self-love, what they deem as self-love, when it's not, it's selfless love. Because they're not loving themselves. If they did, they'd walk away from that relationship, whatever status it was. And, you know, they, they don't realise that they're going through a number of feelings because breadcrumbing has a big impact on individuals. Let me give you a couple of experiences. You could be feeling confused. You could be feeling anger. You might be doubting yourself, therefore going through self-doubt. Some people will go through different ranges of anxiety, all types. You'll be clearly feeling sadness and loneliness. You might be feeling inadequate, especially if you see them socially interacting with others or having some form of friendship with others. Remember, we're in a world of 2024 where social media is just everywhere. Don't take much for us to stalk, inverted commas, stalk online that other person and what they're doing when they're not with us okay you might be feeling embarrassed embarrassed that you allowed them to be in their life or embarrassed that you've spoken up and said hey how come you're not interacting like that with me you might feel hope or lack of hope you might feel this self-consciousness you know there's so many different aspects to this and the thing is that there's many many people that are successful let's say it again there are many people out there who are susceptible to breadcrumbing. As I said, I was one of them. I, I put my hands up. I was one of them. And even in adulthood, there are times when we're still accepting breadcrumbing in our relationships 
We don't visually see it like that, but it clearly is. Okay? So there's different types of individuals that will have, um, you know, I guess, are more inclin inclined to accept it. There are going to be people with childhood trauma. Hands up here. There's going to be people that have um, never received inconsistent or consistent attention from their parents, caregivers, or from their partners, and they've become to accept that, again, as normality. Okay? You might have somebody having different um, substance abuse or different addictive uh, patterns of behaviour. You might have someone that's got an addictive personality. They're a bit of a Casanova, or they think they're a bit of a stud muffin, as we say in the UK. <laughs> but clearly they're not, you know? And again, we come to use to that. There might be people with very low self-esteem. I touched upon that earlier, big time, big time, low self-esteem. You might have someone with mental health issues. You might have someone suffering with depression, anxiety, eating disorders. The list goes on because right now, clinically, there are so many different diagnoses out there and it leaves people vulnerable. It leaves people emotionally vulnerable and it means they're easy to manipulate as well, especially if they're a narcissistic person that sadly they've attracted. You know, now with breadcrumbing, there's different types of things that happen while you're in that scenario. The, your emotions are going to be very scrambled. They are. Your emotions are going to be all over the place. And, you know, you become in different cycles. You come through different types of levels of frustration. And it does leave you confused. And it does leave you anxious. And you are trying to understand it. Hence, when I've had friends talk to me about these scenarios, and I'm guilty of this myself. You're trying to think out loud as what the hell is going on. And you don't necessarily understand that this person's breadcrumbing you. You know, there's lots and lots of different red flags as we talked about earlier. And sometimes that person will be giving you different types of red flags from one extreme to another. It can be that they, they talk to you for hours and hours and hours, communicate with you maybe on a social media aspect maybe on a phone call, video call, whatever, or face to face, then they just completely blank you out of the blue. And they might be giving you lots of flattery and then going silent and clearly giving that attention to someone else, you know? And that type of thing is not acceptable. That's when you re realize this person is doing the breadcrumbs. But like I said, some of us are so stuck deep into that, that sort of like loop that we don't want to see it. And we don't accept that this person is hurting us emotionally, psychology, you know, um, emotionally, definitely. And they, they help, you know, not helping us in our uh, trauma, I guess, and not helping us in our own mental health state. They're not helping us in regards to, you know, going forward because these people are not honest with their intentions. They make plans about the future, but they're actually not sincere, okay? Their actions are not matching up their words. The things that they're saying to you, they've said probably to many, many other people, more than likely, okay? And it's not easy to sit back, detach, and understand that breadcrumbing is happening to me. And it's us that have to make that change, the victim. And I mean victim very, very loosely here because, you know, you are in a position where you can step away, you can walk away, you can say to yourself, I deserve more. But believe me, when you're in that situation, you're trying to walk away from it, it's not hard to detach. Because sometimes we convince ourselves that that person really, really loves us and they're a soul tie or they're a, a twin flame, um, they're the love of our life. No, they're not. They're really not. But because our, our self-esteem is so low, we will just accept anything. Again, breadcrumbs will accept anything. Tiny bit of attention. So what do we do to try and help ourselves step out of this, recover from this? If you've just listened to this and re recognize what I'm talking about, how do you move forward? What do you do to, to get out of this? One, talk to a friend and understand this person's behavior, you know? Try and identify it, try and label it. What is happening in this situationship? That's what I'm gonna call it, because really it's not a relationship, it's a situationship. 
The other individual is clearly trying to gain something from it, which they're clearly not. Okay. Then we need to, you know, <coughs> try and maybe if it's got to the point where it's really extreme and it's impacting us mental health wise on a big scale, we clearly need to go and see someone. We need to see a counsellor. Now that sometimes isn't always ideal because it costs money, it costs time, it waiting in the system. Sometimes a close friend helps. Um, they might not be someone that's a trained counsellor, but someone that you know is not going to judge you, someone that sits and listens and gives you very thought-provoking advice and isn't going to, you know, throw it in your face. But be understanding, it can be very frustrating for that person when you keep taking that individual back, even though they've said to you many, many times, this person isn't good for you and they're not the right person for you. Many, many people these days do other things as well. They, they try and think about their feelings and if they can't find a counsellor and they can't find someone of a mental health uh, status because of various things I've just discussed, sometimes journaling is, is a brilliant way to help you write down your thoughts, feelings, write down actions. Some people even give the journal to the other individual. Now, there's, there's pros and cons to that. There's nothing stopping that person from just putting the, that in the bin, dismissing it. They could just totally ignore it. They could totally dismiss it. They could totally just blank it out. That would be a big, big, big red flag right there if someone doesn't want to address those situations, okay? Sometimes, if that person is genuine, they care about the relationship, they might actually read it and take on board what you've said. But if they mock you, if they criticise you, if they blame it on you, that is not the relationship you think it is, clearly. And again, don't um, deceive yourself thinking that that's the situation, you know? You can always con confront them, which is what the journal task, I guess, does. And that, again, is you having that heartfelt, deep conversation. And again, this under other individual doesn't always want to hear it. They don't. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to listen to it. They might be blind to it, okay? And, you know, that person might not always alter their behavior. They might not want to hear it. Their actions become more resentful, actually. They become more hurtful. If it's a genuine, genuine, caring, loving relationship, that person will listen to you. That person will sit, listen to what you've said, take on board what you've said, make the necessary changes together, not alone, together because you might also need to change things about you to go forward and clearly if that's not happening you have to end things now when you're ending that relationship it's not nice because you realize you've been manipulated you realize you've been rejected you realize that this is not the person you thought they were you end up being embarrassed which starts another cycle of mental abuse to yourself mental torture to yourself and you have to understand that ending this is better for you in the long run. Don't feel like it at the time, I know. Doesn't. But it's the right thing to do. Because that friendship, that relationship, is not an equal, balanced relationship. It's one where that person is not invested in you at all. Okay? And you have to think about why is this person doing this to me in the first place? You know, people do it because some individuals, not all, some individuals have various aspects of narcissistic behavior. We've discussed narcissism in a couple of my podcasts, so I'm not going to take up this whole podcast discussing it, but they have, they've got that narcissistic controlling manipulative behavior where they seek attention for themselves to boost their ego, to boost their pride, all the while draining you. Let that sink in. Some individuals might be just not fully able to have that pure love, care, balanced, um, attached style relationship. In fact, they've got the opposite. They've got the insecure attachment style. They've got the avoidant style of relationship. So hence, they do the breadcrumbing, hook you, right? And then as soon as they've got you, now nah, on to the next one. Bored now. What's the next challenge? And I'm genuinely saying that's how it is, because it is. We don't see that when we're the victim, inverted commas, of that scenario. 
we don't realize that our low self-esteem our very low self-esteem is getting us hooked to that and it becomes addictive it does it becomes addictive to be used to low breadcrumb style attention we're worth a hell of a hell of a lot more hell of a lot more and we need to wake up and see that you know and some individuals will not they'll keep continuing to do the breadcrumbing to others you know they'll repeatedly keep doing the same pattern of behavior it's us as individuals that have to wake up wake up smell the coffee wake up and realize this is damaging you big time it is damaging your self-concept your self-esteem your self-love and this is not a relationship it's a painful 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 trajectory and journey you're on and it's one that you need to get out of fast before you get any deeper and any further and in any more pain because believe me at the end nobody wins you don't win you end up in pain you end up with trauma you end up with very very low self-esteem and low, low sense of self-worth and you are forever taunted and traumatized by that individual and you're also angry at yourself that you've tolerated that as you're coming out in the healing process that is you know so many people out there now on different sorts of relationship status are doing the breadcrumbing and the gaslighting and you know doing the poor communications and it's not acceptable they're not acceptable these mixed messages are not helping individuals where we think this is a valued um, kind loving caring relationship hell no as my american friends would say no you have to wake up and understand that various things are happening to me while i'm in this and i have to deal with this and i have to seek support and i have to practice self-compassion and i have to work on my self-esteem and i have to put my boundaries in this is where therapy comes in and like I said, sometimes it's not easy. It is not. Because getting that help, getting that support is not easy. Not everybody can afford a psychoanalysis, a psychologist. They can't. They really can't. And these days, you know, there's so many different types of therapies out there um, that are available. It's mind-blowing. You know? There's, there's CBT, which is Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, out there. That's, that helps you with your relationship between your thoughts, your feelings, different behaviours. It helps you look at the root cause. Uh, a new one that one of my friends actually told me about is EMDR. And this is where you have eye movement, desensitization, pro reprocessing. And this is where you're going through traumatic memories, you know, and you're reenacting certain parts of your past with your intimate relationships to get to, again, to the root cause of things that are happening. Another one is psychodynamic therapy. This is where you're looking at the past and looking at interpersonal interactions. And you're becoming more conscious of the unconscious, things that you do automatically that you're programmed and you don't always necessarily understand why you're doing it. One that I um, am admiring of uh, is mindfulness-based cognitive therapy. And this is where people are becoming more aware and accepting of the thoughts, looking at the rationale behind it looking at their intense emotions behind it and allowing them to make room um, for us to live in a mindful way, you know, and looking at these patterns of behavior as well. And, and lastly, there's one called interpersonal therapy. This one is looking at the relationship and connection between trauma and our interpersonal distress. So if we resolve the trauma, we become more empowered in our, in our relationships. Like I said, there's so many different types of uh, relationship and trauma and therapy out there now because since COVID and since our lives are becoming so, you know, involved, um, we've had to come up with different therapies. Not one is working. Not all fits one box. We're all from different aspects out there. We're all from different ways that we need to heal. And that's the situation that we need to look at that and we need to heal from that. If you've recognized any of the symptoms, any of the signs, either in yourself or others, please make your friends aware, make you know the ones that you love aware, because we don't understand sometimes, and sometimes we don't want to listen. 
And it's the ones that don't want to listen that keep in that rut and then unfortunately end up with longer trauma to try and recover from. And believe me, it's not an easy journey. It's not an easy journey to recover from. It's not an easy journey to go through and it's not an easy journey to own up from. And we have to wake up and we have to realize that we're in charge of ourselves and we can get out of this and we can move past this and we can move forward but we have to be willing to make the first step and we have to be able to say to ourselves I deserve more I deserve better and I'm not staying in this situation anymore because it's not serving me anymore and you know obviously if this resonates with anyone I really hope and pray that you find that peace and you find that self-love and you find that care and you come out of this the other side because I did but it took me a long 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 time long time and I'm still you know one of those people that no expert on it completely because when you're in it like I said it can take it out of you so wherever you are on that journey of healing of breadcrumbs I wish you all the best I hope and pray that you find a solution and I hope and pray that you come out of this the other side. Send your love and peace on your journey of healing. Much love from Miriam at Raise Your Vibes.